Hey there, how's it going? Fon here, thank you for joining me. Today I would like to have a little look at a few basic tips just to help get you started on an amazing program called Cubase by a company called Steinberg. The version that I use is called Cubase SX2, which is, I confess, about 20 years old, but it's still an amazing program. I've tried some of the newer versions, I didn't actually like them as much, and I guess I'm just so used to Cubase SX2, but also you will find they're quite similar. And uh, just before I launch in, I want to just point out that I'm using FreeCam 8 to record what's going on on my desktop. So, before we even get started, let's set a project folder. So we're going to this PC, we go to Music. Here's one I made earlier, Cubase. And we're going to right click, New, Folder. And let's call this. Okay. So we'll come out of there, we'll go back and we open Cubase. Now, the first time we open it, we're going to say New Project. And straight away it's asking if we want to do MIDI or audio or something else. And we're just going to click on default because that has a lot of nice options. It's also asking where do you want to record, where, where do you want your, your folder to be. And you scroll through and you find the one that we just made. And we click OK. So what you'll find when this opens is here are your audio tracks and you can you can make more of them or less of them. Uh, add audio track. Okay. Below that you've got your MIDI tracks and in another video soon I'll look at the very very basics of MIDI with you but for now today we're just going to look at a little bit of audio stuff to get started. Um, myself personally I am using today the UR22 Mark II made by Steinberg who created Cubase. It's basically an audio interface that's able to use a thing called ASIO, which stands for Audio Stream In Out, which was a format or system designed by Steinberg. So if you want best results with Cubase, any version of it, you're going to want to use an audio interface that can use ASIO. Okay, so that's what I'm using. Day one, you're going to want to go into Devices. And you want to go to VST Connections, and here your device should show up, assuming that you've done everything right, it'll show up there. Or if there are other options, select that, okay? Um, and, and, you know, there, there are ways that you can, you can access that, you can, you can get in through there as well. And whenever there's any set of choices you always want to go for ASIO and the, your audio interface on the list. Okay so moving on a um, couple of things devices mixer that's super important that's basically your multi-channel recording disc desk for once you've recorded channels so you're going to want this record enabled and you're going to want it highlighted um, and then if we click record here, in theory, this should record. I'm going to just record a few finger snaps there. Okay. We have liftoff. Um, now for ed audio editing, I always found that you had to highlight that. And you go into audio and you change it into a part. Now it's fully editable. Okay, so a number of things. Um, if I hit the control button on my keyboard I can now move the left hand marker okay and if I hit alt I can move the right hand marker um, why is that important it's important for things like dropping in and dropping out or punching in and punching out so if you want to let's say drop in at one bar let's say for example I want to drop in here uh, control left click and then can alt and right click so i've highlighted this area and then i could for example punch in or drop in punch out or drop out and then when i hit play when it hits this marker here it's going to drop in 
And when it comes to this, it's going to drop. Watch this. Okay. Here's my drop in. Here's my drop in. Okay. And then that should, in theory, I'll just unhighlight that. Here's my drop in. Here's my drop in. Okay. So a um, couple of other things. When you when you right click, it brings up object selection is what it usually is. It's our little mouse. Okay. And we've got split or cut. We've got glue and erase. Now they, they're all super, super useful. Uh, let's just say that little bit, that drop in that I just recorded, I could hypothetically right click, pull out the glue and glue that to that. That's okay. Um, and because it's um, because it's a part, we can, we can go in and we can look at it. Um, there are the few finger clicks. And then there's a little gap. Here's my drop in. Here's my drop. And there's the drop in. Now, while we're in this little audio editor here, um, we can move and we can. While that's highlighted, I can use a drag bar there to move that left and right. When that's highlighted, I can use this drag bar. So let's just say, for example, I want to move that back to there. Let's just say, okay. I'm going to touch there. I'm going to hit play. Here's my drop in. Here's my drop in. And watch this. For example, if I just wanted, here's my drop in. Watch this. I think I've got this right. Let's see. One second. Here's my drop in. And so on. So let's just, I'm going to come out of the audio. Edit. Let's look at a couple of other things. Um, drag bar, I'm just going to. Pull that back to be a bit more neat. Um, if I wanted to copy this, I click Alt. Holding Alt, and I left click and drag, and I just made a copy. And um, let's let's say if I didn't want that to come after it, but to be at the same time, I've now got two tracks doing the same thing. A couple of other little things just before I finish, and this is just a, this is an amazing program with millions of features. So I'm just showing you a couple of basic little things to get you started. Devices, mixer, okay, and if I click play, and in fact I'm just going, I'm going to put this on a little loop again. Uh, control left click, look uh, loop. Oh, and while I'm here, look. You can have this either as bars and beats, which is what I usually have, or as seconds. Bars and beats, really. So set this to loop. Here's my drop. Okay. Let's get a little bit more of that. Yeah. Here's my drop in. Watch, I can now call up. Um, Here's my drop in. There are individual volumes for each track here, and you can pan to the right or left in your stereo image. So, you know, you're going to have 10, 20, however many audio tracks, and you're going to be mixing them up and down. Just going to super quick show you mute a track, solo a track. Read and write automation. Let's very, 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 very quickly show you that. So we, if I wanted to, watch, write automation for this channel. So I'm going to click play, and I'm going to go like this. Watch. Here's my drop in. Now, we come out, write, we click read, we rewind, and we've got read automation. Watch. Here's my drop in. Okay. Mute, solo, read automation, write. And then if you want to go into the channel settings there, you've got a load of different toys here, wonderful toys. Here's your EQ line. If you want to boost the trebles, go like that. If you want to cut your trebles, go like that. Boost your bases, go like that. And then you're going to have 
um, effects that you're going to install. And, you know, like uh, my uh, effects, for example, let's just say if I wanted um, a reverb, let's just say reverb A. And I've now, I've got that switched on, so reverb A should be affecting that channel now. One second, excuse me. Back to, back to there. One second. I'm just going to solo this track and put it in loop. And you should now hear the reverb. Okay. So I hope that's given you a few ideas. So, you, you know, you, you in, insert your effects there and have them switched off or switched on and go in and, and, and alter them in here. Uh, and I guess for now that should be enough to get you going. Um, this is your information panel. Volume is here. Your left right panning is there and information about what's what's actually happening is, is there. Okay. I think for now that should hopefully get you started. And you know, this this menu here is also present up there. And this is called your transport bar with your looping and your stop, your play, and your record, and that's all available up there as well. Um, tempo should be fixed because if you go like that, it for example, if you wanted to have a fast track going to medium and then to slow, you can change it as you go. So just typically leave that on that. Um, okay, I hope that's been some use to you. It's a little introduction to an amazing, wonderful program, Cubase. Uh, there's a lot more to it. I'm going to do a few other tutorials another day soon. But for now, hopefully that will get you started. Thank you for joining me.